Hey, what's up, Simp Squad, and welcome back to another episode of Simply Pod Logical, a Simply Nailogical podcast. Hello, everyone. <laughs> 2021's off to a pretty rough start, Christine. It's been 9, 10, 11, 12 days. <laughs> I'm in a pretty judgmental mood right now, mm-hmm. so I thought we would do another episode of looking at Reddit, am I the asshole scenarios, and telling people whether or not they are assholes. So we can call everyone an asshole. <laughs> That's right. Okay, so we've done this before. I think people know the drill, but basically there's a very popular subreddit where people propose or describe a scenario, and they want the internet to decide whether they were the jerks in that situation or whether they are justified or in the right. <laughs> So let's just hop right into it. Just a lesson in social psychology. (laughs) All right, first one. Am I the asshole for missing my carpool ride by 36 seconds? 36 seconds, exactly. Okay, (laughs) let's, yeah. All right, I have a friend who I work with who has OCD. He is very controlling about time. One day my car broke down, so I told him and asked him if he could give me a ride the next day to work. It's far, so I'd rather pay him than an Uber. Uh, He said, sure, meet me at 7.36 a.m. outside. I said, cool. Next day, I go outside at 7.36 a.m. and he's nowhere to be found. I call him and ask where he is. He says, he left 36 seconds ago. He was angry that I wasn't on time and was 36 seconds late. I said, come on, man, it's just 36 seconds. But he said it's about the principle of the matter and that he wants to teach me how to be more responsible. He eventually turned back and picked me up but scolded me for wasting more time and charged me more since he had to drive more. Uh, technically I was late by 36 seconds. I do know he is a very time oriented person, which is why I think I'm the asshole. Are they the asshole, Christine? I mean, I think if it was you and I in this situation and you left me by 36 seconds, I would say, yes, you're an (laughs) asshole. Um, but in reading the description, obviously there's other things to consider. Like this person has severe OCD. So I can't really... Yeah, okay, I yeah. feel like I, I don't know um, I, to the I, extent that that impacts someone's um, like life decision making and how emotionally, like I, I don't know. I guess is that I'm is saying. a very charitable way of looking at this. I guess I've never known someone with severe OCD, mm-hmm. so I guess I'm, I don't feel totally comfortable just labeling this person a jerk for having done this. Mm-hmm. Maybe let's take that out of the equation so we can just have more fun with it. Like (laughs) it just ignoring the fact that this person maybe has some anxiety disorder. Yeah. 36 seconds is what, like you're still within the minute of (laughs) someone who said when they would be ready for a pickup, right? Yeah. I always thought like 15 minutes was the generally accepted allowance of time. Cause it's like, if you call the doctors and you say you're going to be late, they say, okay, you have 15 minutes beyond the di- the time of your appointment time to be there before they're going to issue, like say that you missed the appointment. Fifth, that's that's 15. a long, for maybe a doctor's appointment, maybe. But if I'm going to pick up a friend oh yeah, I guess and they're, they're not there within maybe five minutes, I'm probably leaving. But like the thing is you just call, you call them, right? You yeah. text them, oh, like, yeah. where was, are you? There was no mention about calling well, he, them? When the guy wasn't there, he called him and he's like, I drove away because oh. you were 36 seconds late. Yeah, I guess good point. The first thing to do if someone else is late is to call them and be like, hey, where are you? I'm outside. But this person wasn't <laughs> late at all. Like the clock would have still said 736 if it doesn't have like the seconds hand, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, this is uh, uh, without being judgmental of people with OCD. This is uh, this is not a reasonable person picking you up. So would Agree? you get another ride? <laughs> I don't know. Well, Call an Uber. <laughs> at the end of the you're at the mercy of someone doing you a favor, right? I guess yeah, they get to set point. the rules here too. Yeah, good point. The person driving. I, I mean, I guess I felt like that in high school. I used to drive yeah. like my uh, my sister's friends or I guess my parents' uh, kids' friends. Okay. No, my, my parents' friends' kids, not my friends' kids. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I, I drove and what I definitely got annoyed if people were late, yeah. but I didn't leave 36 seconds later. What if you wanted to but teach them a lesson? But we had cell phones then precisely for this type of reason, even though it wasn't as common for, you know, every 17 year old to have a cell phone yeah. at the time. But, uh, yeah, I would call them and be like, where are you? Or text them. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Next scenario. <laughs> Am I the asshole for setting a pee trap for my wife? It's a pee trap. Do you want to guess what a pee trap is before I read the... A pee (laughs) trap? Like, is it where you prank someone and put um, 
saran wrap over the toilet so it <laughs> goes back and shoots did, at you. They used to do that. Did someone do that to you? Not to me. Obviously, I would notice, but they did oh. that to like boys in res. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a funny joke. Yay, it's peas everywhere. <laughs> That's a good guess. Yay, you have to clean the bathroom. All right, let's see what it is. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm a 39 year old man and I'm married to a 31 year old woman. Uh, ever since my wife and I were just dating, she tried to be very insistent that I sit down to urinate. What? I do not want to sit down to urinate, so I do not. Frankly, I don't think it's any of her business how I pee anyway. <laughs> uh, for years now, and especially lately, every time she goes to the bathroom, she does this crazy-eyed thing where she looks down at the floor, groans, and then pulls out paper towels and cleaning spray to wipe it up. I do not pee on the floor and never have, but she calls it Splash Mountain regularly. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, recently I had something of a revelation when as usual we were having an argument about the topic and she said that all men pee on the floor every time they go to the restroom it seems like she's outright hell-bent on proving a point anyway the other day I had had enough I went to the restroom stood over the toilet for a minute closed the lid and flushed then I called her in I asked her to point at where I had peed because I'm trying to change my behavior and in a couple seconds she pointed at the spot and said there the spot was clean I hadn't used the bathroom since the day before I told her as much and she got incredibly upset. She said I had set a pee trap and that I, what I did was really mean to her. She, they, she then insisted that every time I go to the bathroom, I pee on the floor again. Uh, I've had enough. I think she's just trying to get out of the fact that I caught her in her crap, but she has doubled down on her behavior and is completely convinced I'm a relentless a-hole. Uh, I don't think I did anything wrong. Am I the a-hole? I mean... She got exposed by the pee trap. Yeah, I know. That's funny. But she's... There's some bias there. She's looking for a problem. She's convinced that it always exists. So even if that problem didn't occur, she still thinks she's going to find it. It's pretty it. brilliant what he did. Like, and it's clearly like there's some sort of neuroses or neurotic thing about this. And hey, maybe the, maybe nine times out of ten, he is peeing on the floor and it's splashing around. You know, it ha wait, so happens to the best of us. It happens nine times out of ten? Well, I, I don't, I don't on the know. Floor. Maybe there... What do you mean you don't know? <laughs> Oh, well, I, I'm not saying I do it all. Sometimes things How many times out of 10 do you pee on the floor? Well, do you notice pee on the floor all the time? Well, I'm not looking, but maybe I should start. <laughs> ben! I, sometimes there's a little splashage. Ew. Uh, splash. <laughs> no. Guys. Okay, well, you're going to use the other bathroom now. <laughs> we, we basically do just gravitate towards... You've sort of claimed the the main bathroom and i often just go to the guest one anyway but i use the guest one all the time from my office why you gotta so spread it's... yourself around all the bathrooms you stick to your bathroom i'll stick to mine no then man. you won't have to worry about pee traps we should probably clean <laughs> the bathroom floors <laughs> no i don't think uh, he he caught her being unreasonable mm -hmm. you would think that like yes i get that that's kind of mean that you basically expose your partner for lying but it's only but that doesn't mean by that her maybe being unreasonable. she didn't well, maybe she does have a point. Maybe this one time he caught her in a lie. But does that automatically mean that she was always making it up and he never pees on the floor? We don't it's, know that. It's at least evidence that she sees the problem when it's not even there, though, right? Mm -hmm. Like, actually, I've but got... But how did she get to that point? Well, they got to that point with having uh, trust issues, obviously. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, something kind of... It has nothing to do with pee, but uh, I'll be anonymous about who it was. I don't want to... I knew someone who they would rent things from their local video store and they brought a few movies back and the guy working there said, hey, there's something wrong with your VCR. It's destroying our tapes. And he wanted to charge their account for having ruined their VHS tapes. So this is like 20 years ago. This is a while ago when you still rented <laughs> tapes from like okay, a blockbuster yeah. or more independent type of video store. So they were like, they 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 gave the guy some money but it was weird and like they rented mm. more movies there and he claimed the problem happened again so one time they rented movies never put it in their vcr oh shit brought it back to the video store and, and he said yeah. oh your vcr ruined these tapes again and they're like oh that's funny i never put them in my vcr and he just like realized he had been caught just trying to scam these people out of money huh yeah i mean i don't know if that means he that Per, that business owner was always scamming the person because it could have totally uh, happened. And then he realized, indication. oh, maybe I could get money this way and, and lie. Uh, that is I'm very nice of you to not assume the worst of people. <laughs> but that seems like a pretty clear case of the guy was scamming them, I think. So, Ben, do you pee on the floor? 
it may occasionally happen by accident. But if you were, if you were coming in after I peed every time and were like, oh my God, and started wiping the floors as if I'm like a monster, yeah, that would get on my nerves too. I think it's hilarious how she's insisting that he pee sit, sitting down. Because like, how do you even... <laughs> enforce that? No, no, not enforce that. But like, how? And like, I know it's possible. Sorry, I'm confused. You don't think men can pee no, sitting no, I, down? No, no, I know they can. They could, but it's not common, right? You tell me. <laughs> like, I, don't know. I mean, sometimes in the morning, if I go to the bathroom, <laughs> this is I might sit down just because I want to like look at my phone for a few minutes, even oh, if I don't. Is that why? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I never pee sitting down, but typically, no. But it, typically, let's not. Right. Because like in... Oh, I will. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. Like, I'm just going based off of uh, what I see in movies and television shows where in a men's bathroom, the scene is always urinals and they're always standing up. Yeah, urinals so are that's super That's my convenient. knowledge. <laughs> if we ever, like, move into another house or, like, redo a bathroom, I maybe just want a urinal, actually, at home. I think that'd be pretty cool. So do urinals do a better <laughs> job of catching the pee so it doesn't go on the floor? Is I there something, like, structurally different about the urinal than a toilet? It's harder to miss a urinal. <laughs> Wait, there's no water at the bottom of a urinal, is there? Well, like... Because uh, maybe it splashes up from the toilet. It splashes up? If, you think someone's peeing so hard into a toilet, it's splashing back. Well, if... I guess if, I, I it, see right? gravity if, if that If liquid can hits water, it can splash Some toilets are up. more poorly designed that I find things could have splashed back more easily, too. It depends how much water <laughs> is sitting within the toilet. We're getting way too specific about this. This is the most this. disgusting <laughs> conversation we've had on this podcast. No. Can we just go to the next one? <laughs> okay, next next scenario. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to clean the bathroom floor after this. Uh, am I the asshole for telling HR that a woman in my office doesn't wash her hair? <laughs> uh, so I work in a small office with several other people due to COVID. We have mostly been working from home, but we work in the office a couple days a week. Uh, last week I overheard a conversation, which Tina was telling another coworker that she's glad to be able to work from home because now she doesn't have to wash her hair as often. Apparently it's a thing in which you don't wash your hair too much to make it less greasy. Uh, why anyone believes that is beyond me. Isn't there, there's a detriment to washing your hair too much i think we'll discuss That's, okay Just finish reading <laughs> uh okay but here's the thing there's a virus going around and is we've been there? trying to convince people to wash their hands and this girl is coming into work every day without washing her hair i'm sorry but that is nasty if you want to sit on your couch and be dirty uh do you but i don't want you near me with your greasy head <laughs> <laughs> so i went to hr and filed a complaint <laughs> God. I thought that they took me seriously, but then yesterday I got an email from Tina telling me I need to mind my own business and stop being a Karen. Oh. I responded that I don't want to get sick and that I would appreciate working with people with good hygiene and that she should see if she can work at home full time if she doesn't like it. Today I went to work and while Tina wasn't there, another woman who was also also told me to mind my own business. We had some choice words. Am I possibly the bad guy here because I like good the hygiene am i the a-hole <laughs> this person sounds really fun at parties yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh okay do you want to give a like well first of all i because they called uh, the poster a karen it makes me think well maybe the poster is a woman but before i saw that i'm like this is definitely a guy a man can be a Karen for sure. So okay, so I maybe so. It I don't is think a guy. there is a male name equivalent for that insult yet that I, I'm aware. I of. just think that the the context of this might be better understood if we knew that if the poster was a guy or a girl, because only because not 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 always obviously, but women have tend to at some point in their life experience longer hair usually on mm -hmm. average. So maybe they have a bit more understanding about that. Whereas. A lot of men just have never had long hair. So how the fuck do they know, right? So do you want to expose yourself, Christine? How how many times a week <laughs> do you have to wash your hair? I you have think? to admit that in quarantine, it has been far less frequent <laughs> yeah. because I used to use like going to work as like a reason why I needed to shower. Usually, the, honestly, the <laughs> night before, just because my hair is so long. And if I shower in the morning... I don't have time to blow dry my hair Your because hair's I don't care. Hours, so right, I, don't, yeah. I don't want to go to work with wet hair because it will be wet for two or three hours. Yeah. So to me, that's like even weirder. Do blow show. dryers not exist in 2020? They do, it... but they take a long time and I don't want to spend my time blow drying my Fair hair. Enough. Also, blow drying your hair every time isn't the best for your hair because you're oh. applying hot air to your hair and it can cause like um, your hair to, to... It can damage your it hair. It can damage guess, your yeah. hair. I mean, some people do it all the time, whatever. I, I just don't. I do it occasionally. Uh -huh. 
So what was your question? So, how, well, so you, like you work out a lot, so you shower quite often, but I think I've yeah. seen you shower without getting your head wet mm-hmm. too. And I think that that is more common in women who exercise a lot because sometimes like you, your body is sweating a bit, but you're not working maybe hard enough. You're not doing super cardio that like you're sweating from your forehead. Mm-hmm. And I think on average, I'm just not someone who sweats that much, even when I'm exerting myself. Like I find I'm, I'm never dripping in sweat, like rarely. Maybe I'll, I'll have like a bead of sweat on my back, but like that's mm-hmm. it. So I will shower with putting my hair up in a, like a plastic bag, meaning I don't wash my hair sometimes. You put a plastic bag on Yeah, it? just so it doesn't get wet. Oh, I've never noticed that. Or you can kind of like distance your head. I I'm not watching you head. shower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's just peeing. <laughs> I'm peeing all over you the floor while you shower. You can distance your head a little bit from the, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the rain faucet. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I shower every day just because I feel like I haven't really woken up until I shower in the morning. Mm-hmm. But I have heard that that's not great for your skin or your... Uh... I think it was it was Joey Graceffa who said this. He made a video about how his hair is like the best it has ever been or why his hair is so good. I can't even remember the yeah. title, but I was like really curious. So sure. I clicked on it. And his answer was to not shampoo, like basically. ever? Well, I, I don't think he meant ever, but... Uh, <laughs> We should watch that video again. There is mind. some research out there. I haven't read it recently, so I don't want to sound like I know what I'm actually talking about. Uh-huh. But I remember hearing it at some point that uh, the more you shower and you shampoo, it can actually strip some of the good natural oils off your hair. And that can be a detriment to um, like maintaining good hair in terms of maybe you're just going to cause more, more damage and more breaks by shampooing yeah. and stripping the natural oils. So maybe there's... That, that Some sounds of that. good. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but that sounds like a very plausible explanation. And I think practically speaking, if you have really long hair, hi, yes. Hello. Um, <laughs> or you have maybe very thick hair, and it, sh- it could be short, but just thicker hair, uh-huh. it's more of a practical nuisance to shower every single day because it takes hours to dry and it takes, you probably have to redo all that maintenance. If you're someone who blow dries or has to style every time you shower, yeah. that's like a whole lot of work to do. All right. So returning back to this scenario, <laughs> the concern that someone is more likely to make you sick because they don't wash oh. their hair every day is pretty absurd, right? Like I think so, but I also don't know. I yeah, wonder if we doctor. should get uh, Dr. New back on the podcast and ask him. This is Dr. Mike. Can think? you uh, transmit COVID through dirty hair? Yeah, this this person seems like a jerk to me. Also, like HR is one of those things where like... Well, this is what they deal with. I know, but you would really <laughs> hope you don't have to escalate things to HR like this. I, I understand there's a reason it exists because you want to be able to anon it. First of all, the HR department should not have exposed this guy for having made the complaint. <laughs> Well, like, they, pro- they probably didn't expose the person, but the person just knew because... Yeah, um, right. often you can guess who the Tina, source of yeah. the complaint Tina is. Tina knew who the poster was because <laughs> uh, I guess this person has been making comments around, about it, right? Well, no, he said he complained to HR and then the next day she uh, told him to mind his or her own business. Mm-hmm. So either HR told the person who complained, which they shouldn't have done, or this person is probably... It may be the case this person's unreasonable in many ways, and it was obvious to guess who it was. Have you yeah. have you ever had to make an HR complaint at work, by the no. way? And even no. if I thought about it, I wouldn't. You would. You're not, so I'm just like, no I don't want to be that person. Yeah. I mean, Me- we, we've all dealt with weird things like this in the workplace. Like a few jobs ago, I remember someone always used to walk around barefoot, like mm-hmm. not even just socks, but bare feet. And our floors were somewhat carpeted, like that government office, like kind of carpet, but not really. And okay. um, it uh, smelled. Yeah, that's a little weird. I used to wear sandals to work and then someone eventually was like, you know, we can kind of smell your feet sometimes. Like, okay, I should probably not wear sandals that's anymore. That's a tough one though, because <laughs> you're wearing footwear, which is required and you should wear. But yeah. like, can you help your own natural body odor? I Like, that's a weird one where I don't know, where this person was deliberately taking their shoes and socks off and just walking around the entire office. Yeah, that's pretty bizarre. The only time I can remember it, and like one reason I would never want to be a manager, because I know it didn't escalate to HR, but I remember someone's boss had to say something. Uh, someone would like g- go work out during the lunch hour. Yeah. They'd come back into their cubicle. They would change in their cubicle and they would spray like Axe body spray all over themselves. So like not only were they kind of getting naked <laughs> in their office and like you'd walk by the cubicle and the walls were high enough that like 
it mostly obstructed the view, but you'd walk out of this guy's lesson, look in, and there'd be like just a topless guy in there. Anyway, but the 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 scent thing was more of the issue, right? Because you can't be spraying perfumes and stuff oh, all over the office. That's why there's so many signs everywhere. Like at least in our office, there's been signs for years that says like you can't wear scented uh, perfumes or lotions or sprays because it causes people with allergy issues or sure. sensitivities. Or it's just obnoxious. Yeah. And most reasonable people shouldn't even have to be told this. But if they're reasonable... You just, it just takes one person to kind of point it out maybe, mm -hmm. but I guess there's always the chance someone is just a Karen type person and it just becomes a bigger issue. And just the idea of having to deal with that as a boss or oh, manager that, is just the that worst. That corporate life of working in the <laughs> office, which we don't have to do anymore and neither, oh no. Well, you said sometimes they work. Uh, there are definitely people working in yeah, offices I know. today. I know. Yeah. yeah, I didn't mean that. I meant in, in a lot of corporate contexts where there's no like public service being given where you don't have to deal with the public a lot of those jobs have transferred um like to home because yeah, a lot of you don't actually need to and, interact yeah. or do anything with anyone other than like video conferencing works mm -hmm. so um all the best to uh the poster here <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, good luck with maybe that. they just need to, maybe, to let go a little maybe you should work from home <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> remove yourself from the situation all right next one am i the asshole for thinking the joke my family played on my girlfriend was a big deal for not thinking it was a big deal. Uh, I'm a 24 five year old guy. I have a girlfriend, 23 years old, who is absolutely beautiful, but she does have a large facial scar. Uh, my family often joke about it. They have a super dark sense of humor. It bothers my girlfriend and she says she doesn't feel like a joke. It feels like she's being insulted under the pretense of it being dark humor. Even though I explain it's just how they are and they don't mean any harm, she doesn't really want to be around them. I told her it was really important to me that we spend Christmas with my family. We would all quarantine first and test, but it was important to me. Uh, she resisted at first, but after some urging from me, she gave in. She said, I absolutely could not excuse their behavior if they made a rude comment about her, though. Clearly, she wasn't reluctant to go about because of COVID. I think it's because she thinks mm -hmm. your family uh, belittles her. Um, okay. Uh, we got there and it was fine for a while. Then my mom and sister broke out their matching ugly Christmas sweaters that had my girlfriend's face all over it. They both laughed, saying my mom had made them, screen printed, and it was just a joke. My dad thought it was hilarious. I even chuckled a little because she's really beautiful, so it was ironic that they put her the ugly sweater, her face on the sweater, meaning it was ugly. Uh, my girlfriend looked at me, and then when I said they were just being ironic, she shook her head, got up, and left. Didn't say anything to anyone. She just took her car and left. Uh, I called her several times. She didn't answer. The only text I received was, you need to find your own way home. That pissed me off. And I gave her, I called her a couple more times. The whole time my mom is upset because it was just a joke and she didn't realize my girlfriend was going to overreact like that. I told her that a warning would have been nice, but my sister agreed it was just a joke and my girlfriend was being a baby about it. I don't feel I even need to read the rest of this. I don't need to know how it resolves. Like, this is insane, right? When I see posts like this on this subreddit... <laughs> I'm amazed people don't have the self-awareness to realize like they are describing them being terrible. So is that, that's your first thought? Yeah. Absolutely. Like I could see it. First of all, as soon as she expressed being any at all uncomfortable with it to her partner, a reasonable person I think would tell their family not, even if they did have a dark sense of humor and maybe it was the occasional joke, like that she's like a Bond villain or something kind of harmless and cheeky. But clearly it's something she's sensitive mm -hmm. about, and that is just something you would tell your family not to joke about. For it to escalate to the point where they're joking about her being the face on an ugly Christmas sweater, because the joke is she is ugly. Like, I, how, do, <laughs> how can anyone defend that? That's yeah. insane, right? I feel really bad for her. Um, that was my, I was just like getting increasingly sad. I'm like, oh yeah, God, this poor yeah. Girl. dump this loser. I'm sure everyone who responded I'm, to this thought of the same thing. I'm just trying to understand from the other side, not that I'm trying to defend it. I just like to understand both sides. They seem to not actually think she's ugly. They're like, the whole point was to be ironic and they just think it's funny because they like making fun of things that are bad and okay. awful. I, I kind of get that, but let's say you're dating Ryan Gosling and you take him home to the family and the family just keeps making jokes about how ugly he is. Even if he is like objectively mm -hmm. cultural standard of beauty, 
yeah. it would still be super weird for your family to make a running joke out of him no, being no, ugly, I'm, right? I'm, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just But also... I just, I'm, I'm not letting him use the excuse of, oh, I think she's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like, even if, if, like, even if she's not, be- it doesn't matter if she's Scarlett Johansson. Yeah, if your family's making a joke out of her not looking Why, attractive. But here's the other thing. Why is the family seemingly so obsessed with making fun of her? Do they do this equally to everyone? Or was she isolated in particular to be put on this Christmas sweater as a big joke? Like they, they targeted her, <laughs> right? That's pretty weird. Why? I don't know. Different That's families weird. have different senses of humor. I mean, maybe they kind of did that subconsciously because they know she doesn't like it. Yeah. Which or is, they hate her. Which is fucked They up. want them to break up. Well, I don't, or maybe they're I don't jerks to everyone and we just don't have that context. In which case, they're just a shitty family and you probably don't want to date someone in that family. I mean, like, my family definitely makes fun of each other. Yeah. Not not to this extent. I think if they put your face on a sweater, and that would be crossing the line if it made you uncomfortable. And I would tell them and they would probably listen to me. But okay. uh, I think in general, like, my family makes jokes that, you know, maybe sure. make fun of each other. Have you ever felt like there was anything that was too much? No, I don't think so. But like, they're joking around about things, but it's not like at the expense at of people so much. Well, maybe sometimes they're teasing each other. Yeah, like mostly. my dad and his twin will say like, well, you're the ugly twin. But yeah. it's like a joke because they're identical twins. <laughs> yeah, that's, like, is that's that mean? Funny. Is that mean? <laughs> like, I don't know. No, I'm okay with that. Yeah. But if they printed my face on sweaters to be like, isn't Ben's face ugly? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I would think it's weird more than being upset personally, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I guess I'm trying to understand because I come from a family that like makes fun of each other, and my sister and I will say things like, "Well, I'm the the better daughter or the smarter daughter." Oh. Like we're just joking because like none of this is true. We're both <laughs> good daughters or whatever. <laughs> okay, but I just hope that kind of stuff. If someone was actually being hurt by that, then I think everyone collectively needs to realize that. But if no one's being hurt. I think within a family, you can kind of all collectively agree that, like, this is okay. But when someone crosses the line, you should uh, listen. Yeah. There you go. All There's right. the advice. Uh, next one. Am I the a-hole for calling my white girlfriend a male mama? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this sounds ridiculous, but bear with me. I'm a 28-year-old guy. I'm African-American. My girlfriend, will car- call her Susie, is uh, 26 years old and white. Uh, obviously so is her family. They're pretty chill and we've never had a problem and I live in a fairly liberal part of the country. Uh, a while back we were fooling around making fun of each other and I called her a Mayo mama and it was kind of an instant regret thing, but she found it hilarious and now it's my pet name for her. Uh, anyway, I had to drop off some stuff for her mom the other day because she doesn't like leaving the house too much at the moment because of you know what. Uh, so we were talking a little... Uh, and the pet name just slipped out. I never said it in front of anyone before because I understand some people might find it odd. And her parents really did not like it. They started saying I was being racist and clearly have double standards. Susie tried to tell them to be quiet and said that she liked the nickname. And if she doesn't feel offended by it, then they shouldn't speak for her. But they persisted and her dad came out with one of the funniest things I've ever heard someone say to me in the most sincere way possible. How would you feel if she called you her chocolate daddy? We're allowed to laugh at this, right? Uh, I started laughing and Susie tried to hide her face, but she looked like she was about to cry from hysterics. I told him I wouldn't really care if it was coming from a place of malice. Uh, I wouldn't really care if it wasn't coming from a place of malice and we decided to get out of there as soon as possible. Anyway, now Susie has been receiving messages from her parents saying that she, they still think it's racist and disrespectful and I should apologize and drop the nickname, but she is sticking to her guns that it's no one's business and she even started calling me Chocolate Daddy. And honestly, I can't stop myself from laughing whenever she says it. Uh, but still, I feel a bit bad for causing an argument with her parents and causing her to get hounded by angry messages. Is this real? Is this real? <laughs> like, I don't know. Is this fan fiction? This almost just seems like a, like a funny troll to like, let's get people talking about exactly this. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I was a little reluctant to include this one, but I just thought the names were funny. And it's... It's one of those things where, like, someone somewhere is going to be offended by this, probably. Mm -hmm. But it's like, if two people in a loving relationship are completely comfortable with using these sort of words... Within reason, though. Like, I, you can't just say with using any words, right? Sure. But I think the, the words chosen for this scenario, like, in and of themselves, can be used in a harmful way and can be used in a not harmful, playful way. 
right? So it's kind of the context in which you use yeah. them. Which is what this guy is describing, yeah. right? Like if it was coming from a weird place or even like sort of fetishizing skin color, mm -hmm. I could see that being pretty weird. Also just pet names in general, I get, I get it slips <laughs> out, but yeah, like you typically don't call your partner those things in front of other people anyway, <laughs> right? Oops. Especially when they're a little subversive, I guess, like... But yeah, I, I don't, I don't get it. It's very tempting. And I think the elephant in the room is to think that it's just her family having an issue with her dating mm. a black guy, maybe. And that's still mm -hmm. like, it's, uh, there are many parts of the country in the U.S., Canada too, where like, I guess there's still a, uh, interracial couples have to deal with some people are going to look at them different. Right. Mm -hmm. And that sucks. And yeah, it sucks that that's the case. Um, I just, yeah, I... <laughs> I don't see the issue here. Yeah, I, I don't see an issue. But I also think it's up to the people using these terms between each other to decide yeah. whether or not that that is good or happy for them or, or maybe it is causing an issue. I don't know. But like according to the, at least one side of the party, because we don't yeah. know her side, right? Good point. Um, it's not causing an issue. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't think he's an asshole though. Right. No. Like that's the, the conclusion we're supposed to come to. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. But this is the one I'm kind of like, I'm not like, I can't put myself in this position, you know, obviously <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> like I, I can't imagine calling you a pet, your pet name being having anything to do with your skin color. That wouldn't occur to me well, ever. Right. Yeah. Like I, it wouldn't make sense for me to call you my Mayo mama. Okay, Ben, let's move on <laughs> move to the on next <laughs> one. This is way too complex for us to unpack here. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one, am I the asshole for telling my 30-year-old girlfriend she does not have a real job? Is she a content creator? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's a TikToker. Uh, my girlfriend and I both work in finance. Oh, okay. oh well, she has a real job. That sounds like a real... Okay. Uh, well, sort of. We met in college and both graduated together four years ago. In 2017, we both earned a bachelor's in accounting and finance. I decided to study for my CPA exam right after graduating. And she decided to go work for a low-level accounting job at a construction company earning $35,000 a year. Uh, I was not happy with her decision to do this, but I know she has never been quite as driven as me. I'm sorry. I mean, different people have different sort of ambitions when it comes to their career. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm reacting I, to him. Oh, okay. I am yeah. not happy with her decision. Y yeah, I'm no, this sorry. Is, this is a bad start. Okay, <laughs> okay. I, I hear what you Go mean. Go on, read, okay. read. I'll uh, shut my mouth. Fast forward to today. I work at one of the big four accounting firms earning $89,000 per Must year. Must be fucking nice. <laughs> Uh, I've worked long hours and put uh, my all into this position. My girlfriend is still at the construction company, but has kind of worked her way up and earned $60,000 annually. Uh, I do not really understand her job position. She manages accounts for different projects. Our main fight over the past four years has been her career choices. That's weird. Mm -hmm. uh, we went out with my colleagues about a month ago and just had drinks. One of them asked my girlfriend what my girlfriend does for a living. I had a bit too much to drink and instantly felt mad and embarrassed as she explained it to him. I said, without thinking, she doesn't have a real job. Uh, my girlfriend laughed it off and said, yeah, I get paid to take naps all day. Her response made everyone at the table uneasy. Really? That seems like a, huh? a good way of trying to disarm the situation when you probably made everyone uneasy, right? Yeah. Like, uh, oh, there's more? There's more. We oh decided a few years ago to put $1,000 per month into savings for our future, which we've been doing religiously. Well, I checked the account and noticed she did not put it in this month. I confronted her about this and she said she's putting into her project car instead. Uh, she's been working and putting a ton of hours into it. Uh, she decided to take a new hobby where she bought some early 90s car and has been putting every dime into making it a race car, I think. I mean, why don't you don't just ask her? You don't know. Uh, she just bought some fuel system electronic thing that was like $1,200. Uh, we're not on the same page anymore about life goals and aspirations. I do not even have room to park my vehicle in the garage anymore. I do not think a luxury vehicle should be parked on the curb. She is $1,000 behind on schedule for a lousy, loud, trashy car, and I cannot deal. I asked if we even share the same goals anymore, and she says she's not sure and that I was really an a-hole when we were out with my colleagues. She says, I do not respect her. I told her that's not true. I just don't know she is smart and capable of more than a dusty 40 per hour week job. 40 hours per week? <laughs> she says she is happy there and plans to stay in that industry if we move to the coast. I don't know what to do. I asked her if she's cool with me posting on here and she said she did not care. 
So am I the a-hole for telling my girlfriend of five years what she does not, that she does not have a real job in front of my colleagues? Yeah. Yeah. Like, am I the asshole for insulting my girlfriend and being an asshole in front of my colleagues? Yeah. like Basically. I have to think some of the people on here just have, uh, they just want the politically, to be no, what's the politically correct way of saying this? Just when people can't read social cues, they're perhaps on the spectrum or have it, other social disorders uh, like uh, i don't know it just sounds like this guy's a, a narcissist and thinks that everyone needs to live up to the same expectations that he sets for himself and if they don't he thinks that they're lazy or she works a dusty 40 hours a week like i'm sorry that's like the normal full-time schedule is 40 hours a week like, yeah what is wrong with you so when i interjected at the beginning to say like she's less career driven I, I wasn't trying to say like he should get to decide how career driven she is or isn't but just some people would rather work that job like first of all she's making a, a good 60K decent salary even yeah. compared to his right it's not like a huge variance even there's plenty yeah. of couples where one person's waking way more than the other and they mm -hmm. still figure out a way to make that work but like she's still making decent money it sounds like she has maybe a more relaxed job she genuinely enjoys mm -hmm. it sounds like she's got things pretty well figured out and it's, that he's embarrassed by it right he's is he, I can see that he's embarrassed that uh, she works at a construction company, like as if that delegitimizes her finance degree for some reason, even though she's like clearly working in, I guess, the finance sector of this company. Like he, ha he has some kind of complex issues, totally. which don't really make sense. And I wonder if, let's say she did get a new job at a top tier finance industry and was all of a sudden making maybe a little bit more than him. Maybe she's making a hundred grand yeah, a year. How would he react? How to would that? he react to that? Or would he all of a sudden be, be so fragile and be upset that now she's better than him? Quote unquote. Men. Right? Men. Men. The just worst. get rid of them. No, no, that's not what I mean. I'm just I saying mean, that like, what I, mean. I don't know if um, anything will make him happy. Yeah. And also his happiness shouldn't be predicated on like, his girlfriend's decision to to work for a company that she likes like it sounds like she did great with her job like she got it she got a 60k a year job off, off after her degree like that's great yeah what the heck <laughs> yeah she's I, young too go back to the page that says how old she is uh yeah she's 27, 27. she's like just out of school yeah <laughs> A lot of people are still living at home well yeah. into their... A lot uh, of people lost their jobs, so you can shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I this, said it. <laughs> this is crazy. The only thing I will add, like, on the second half of this, they describe a scenario where they had agreed as a couple to save a certain amount of mm -hmm. money, and now she's just decided to spend it on some passion project. And I right. think there is a... I could have a little bit more of a nuanced view of how appropriate that is as a couple if you decide certain things, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, a, like... That's a subjective on an individual basis, I guess you would judge that. But when you have a boyfriend who's so uh, non-supportive and belittling, I don't blame her for just being like, fuck this guy. I'm, I'm going to build, that, build that race yeah. car I want. And he might be very controlling about their, their mutual money just based on how he's so fixated about it. Wouldn't surprise so me. So maybe she's just like, you know what, man? I'm just yeah. going to build my car in the garage and like, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love that for her. <laughs> Next one. Uh, am I the a-hole for expecting my boyfriend to replace all my socks? Uh, <laughs> is this the one who was washing his face with, uh, his wife's socks? Yeah, maybe he remember ruined all the, the socks by what? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> uh, this might seem a little silly. I'm a 24, a four year old woman. I like wearing cheerful socks. Uh, since my uniform is all white, I currently work as a phlebot phlebotomist. I don't, I know, don't what, know what that is. I don't know what that is. Uh, it usually cheers up the patients too. Uh, I've spent a few years collecting strange socks, ones with sushi, pizza, corgis, cats, Nicolas Cage, etc. I think I had about 30 pairs. My boyfriend, 29 years old, had always hated them and thinks they're childish. So I agreed to only wear them to work and never on dates or around his friends or family. I thought that was fair. Sounds more than fair. <laughs> Is this another jerk guy one? <laughs> Maybe we <laughs> should have screened these better. Uh, on Boxing Day, his parents came over for coffee and gifts. It was just the four of us, which allowed which is allowed where I live and keeping a solid three meters apart. I accidentally put on a pair of childish socks and his mother made a comment about it. I explained that I wear them to work to cheer people up and she liked that. My boyfriend didn't. The next day, all my socks were gone <laughs> and the drawer was filled with plain black socks. Oh I asked my boyfriend and he told me he threw them away and purchased some more appropriate socks so I won't embarrass him in front of his parents again. 
Uh, I told him that's insane, and they were mine, and he had no right to throw them away, not to mention that I spent quite some time collecting them. Uh, so I made a list of the ones I remembered and told him that I expect the same ones as a replacement. He told me that's completely unreasonable and that it would take a lot of time, effort, and money for him to find those specific pairs. I haven't changed my mind yet. They cost me a lot of time and effort to find too. Hmm. I think he's being controlling. Yeah. Uh, he thinks I'm being unreasonable and demanding. Am I the a-hole? Uh, why do socks, <laughs> why do fun socks bother a person so much? This is just insane. Like, I don't... <laughs> no, she is not the a-hole. I have never met someone in my life that sounds like some of these posters that could just be so unreasonable over something that, like, makes no sense. Like, why do you care if like, someone has sparkly socks Maybe or there are some scenarios in life where wearing Nicolas Cage socks could be inappropriate. I don't maybe. think having, having <laughs> I mean, a meal with your in-laws at home is, is one, one of those scenarios. Yeah. It sounds like he's just embarrassed about her socks no matter where they are, like even in the house, which is why he just took them all out and replaced every single one with black socks. And she cl very clearly says she wears them because it helps cheer patients up at work. And I looked it up and a phlebotomist is someone who uh, removes veins, I guess. Oh. So it's it's in healthcare. Gotcha. Um, okay. Maybe, if you have a you condition know, like varicose veins or something like that, I guess there maybe. are certain procedures. But like, okay. yeah, her, her patients need to be cheered up because they're not having a good time. And, uh, you know, maybe the happy socks help them. So like, I don't see what the hell the problem is. Yeah. No, I think that's very good of her. It's insane behavior to just throw out your partner's property <laughs> because of something yeah. that bothers you, like you. Like imagine you throw out my nail polish. <laughs> What would you do if I threw out your nail polish? Throw you out next. <laughs> you want to entertain this? Yeah, no, that would be crazy. If you woke up one day and I threw out all your, just the holographic polishes, because I think they're a little too... Or what if you threw out all my cat ears or something? Well, I've thought about that. <laughs> ben! <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, but like, hey, actually, cat ears, that's an interesting but example. Actually, yeah, use that. Because if, if you so were mature, just, if apparently. we were going out on dates and you insisted on wearing <laughs> cat ears, I, I would like to think we could talk about it and have a reasonable conversation as opposed to me just having to, behind your back, dispose of your cat I think ears. it's this weird thing, especially we saw in this one, where the guy was concerned about what his parents think. Yeah. So, like, if I was wearing cat ears and we went to your parents' house, maybe this isn't the best example, because I don't think... I think that would be hilarious. I don't think so. your parents would actually, like, care <laughs> and tell you that I shouldn't be. But let, let's say you sure, had a different set of parents it. that were, like, would think I'm immature and juvenile uh -huh. and disgusting for wearing... I'm just making this <laughs> okay. up. Okay, yeah. Um, let's go with it. What would you do? Would you tell me, maybe, Christine, can you not wear those cat ears? Or would you just be like, you know what? Do whatever you want, and I'll tell my parents to deal with it. So just to hang out? Like, we're not going anywhere? No, we're just going to their house. But you're embarrassed of me because they tell you it's embarrassing. I don't know. I can't. It's hard for me to imagine because I don't yeah. think they're kind of, they're not the kind of people who uh, yeah, would. Yeah, imagine you had parents who cared, I guess. I... I... I mean, you would have a right to wear it, but I would question why you would be so insistent if it's just yeah. going to lead to some like yeah. petty, annoying bickering on my I guess if I part. was doing it deliberately because I wanted to challenge you <laughs> and like sure. push, push you on this and see like, pick me over your parents, I can understand that causing conflict. But in this case, I don't think that's what's going on. It's just like, these yeah, are the no. socks she has. Everyone has got to wear socks. This so. is just another like controlling part, like often the first sign of uh, unhealthy relationship is one partner trying to control others in ways like this that don't seem serious but mm -hmm. like that's a early warning sign that red flag red flag that is a giant red get flag. get rid of him right? you should throw out all his socks and all your both sockless <laughs> yeah. only, no buy him a bunch of socks but they're only goofy socks they're only nicholas cage <laughs> socks <right. laughs> <laughs> Want to know something funny? Just a well, yeah. random tidbit. I have a really good friend who years ago, her now husband changed her Facebook profile picture to a picture of Nicolas Cage. And Facebook rules at the time where you can't change your profile picture and your name for like 30 days or 60 days or something <laughs> after you change it. So she was stuck so, like that. Wait, sorry. He changed her profile picture and her name to on Nicolas Facebook. Cage. So they were both Nicolas Cage. And she'd be like, what the hell? So mad at him. And then, you know, years went by. She she had changed it back. But then like he'd do it again. And just So every now and then on my timeline, I see Nicolas, Nicolas Cage. Cage. <laughs> <laughs> it's my friend from like we've been friends since university so it's yeah, been like yeah. 10 years and i just laugh every time they have a really good relationship but it's yeah. just like so funny to me 
That's fine. I should log into your Simply accounts when you're not looking and change your uh, No. Info. Okay, that's different. <laughs> that's not fair. Is that fair. different? Is that yeah, a business? Yeah, that, that's not fair because that's tampering with a business. <laughs> I think st- still think it would be fun. Okay. Uh, all right. Am I the a-hole for proposing to my girlfriend with a video game relic instead of a ring? Uh, and refusing to buy a ring after. Well, let's read the scenario okay. and we can get it. Uh, my girlfriend and I met in Sky in a Skyrim meme page in 2014 and have been together six years. So they met together playing video games. Page? About That's so cute. Yes. Uh, last week was our anniversary and I decided I wanted to propose since we met via Skyrim. I thought it would be a, I would promise with the amulet of Mara, which is the symbol that someone is ready for marriage. Uh, she doesn't really wear jewelry or anything, and I never sh- and had just never shown me a ring she likes uh, when we've talked about marriage. So I thought it would be sweet to have something that brought us together. Uh, I set up this whole picnic with our favorite things, and when I proposed, she looked sad and asked about a ring. I told her I thought the amulet of Mara was sweet because we met in Skyrim. The other day, she sat me down and said she thought the amulet was very sweet and she liked it, but she wanted to go ring shopping. I told her I'd already bought the necklace and didn't see any reason for a ring since I didn't propose with one. She said she appreciated the sweet gesture, but she really wanted a traditional ring. We got in an argument, and it's been a tense last few days. Am I the a-hole? So I don't know what this amulet is in the video game. I'm assuming it's a necklace since that's what he bought her. Yeah. What's your... You're a very (laughs) non-traditional person when it comes to these things, so I wonder if that's going to... Right, but what I'm... My first thought when reading this is that it's very clear that it's been established in their relationship that they value this game that they that they met on. Um, they put a lot of weight into that, and that means something for them. And then the other thing is it doesn't sound like she ever voiced throughout their relationship that she wanted a ring in particular, right? It's just okay. a, it's I think... Although, like, maybe she did. I don't know. If she did, then I think I'd have a different response. But it sounds like she just never said that. So The default is the ring, though, right? But my question is, why is that the default when it hasn't been established? I mean, hundreds of years of social convention. Which, (laughs) yeah, which I... I know you want to reject that. I reject that because I think it shouldn't just be assumed that you want what other people have done. I think you should voice what you want with your partner. So if, if she wanted a ring, and I know friends who've done this, like, you know, they kind of tell their partner, I like this ring, hmm. you know. It also helps, uh, practically speaking, sure. so you buy the right ring, <laughs> whatever, and tell them the right size. Uh, but if you never voiced it, then I don't like this expectation that your partner should just think I'm going to buy you a ring. Instead, it sounds like her partner was trying to do something a little more connected to the root of their relationship. Yeah, which, which I, could be more which could meaningful. be more meaningful, exactly. But then she is, as it turns out, just wanted the traditional ring, which isn't wrong for her to want that. Uh-huh. But I guess she never voiced it before, and maybe now he's hurt because she he thought that this was um, actually I don't even know that it's a he. Uh, the, the poster thought that it yeah. would be more uh, you know meaningful to give um, her a, a video a game necklace, relic. Yeah, yeah. How I, do you feel? I'm very curious if. I think you have a pretty unique perspective on this. I'm guessing most people in the comments will be more inclined to think she could just expect a ring. But It seems like he saw a lot of connection to the video game. I'm not so sure she did. Uh, Here's the thing. If you're going to propose to your partner with something other than a ring, I think you need to be incredibly confident that that's going to go over well. And that's probably the main reason just to stick to a ring. I think you should also be confident that proposing with a ring will go over well. Well, yeah, and people should... Proposing with anything, you should... Proposals usually don't come out of nowhere, right? People usually have talked about it. You kind of discuss and maybe you've suggested, like, maybe you don't want a ring at all. You just want a proposal with some words. Or just, yeah, save save your money. Or maybe (laughs) you don't want uh, the the man to propose. You want to do a mutual proposal. I don't know. Is that a thing these days? I don't know, but it could be. Like, (laughs) why does it always have to be one way? I mean, it doesn't have to be anything, but it should be whatever the two people agree on. Agree on, which is my point. So I don't think, based on the information we have here today, that uh, the girlfriend had made it clear that she does want a traditional ring. Okay, but so after the proposal, she makes it clear she wants a ring. But he's also hurt, or the poster is hurt because he did all this thinking like she's going to love this. Uh-huh. And then it's like, oh, she doesn't. 
like what I she's saying all the right things it's very sweet I appreciate the gesture it was very thoughtful but like damn dog I just want a ring on my finger (laughs) I mean maybe she wants both maybe okay what's an amulet or, or, or what's a relic? Sorry, not an amulet. I'm like, I don't know. Usually in video games, you'll like uh, find the relic of Amara that gives you plus five bonus okay, but, points in combat. But what is that in a know. tangible sense? Like, was she actually given something? A necklace, right? A necklace. I think she was given okay, a physical sorry. necklace. It's still a Already piece of bought jewelry. The necklace. So it's like a jewelry with a stone. Like someone is... for you, if you were someone who liked marriage, I know you don't like wearing rings. You have yeah. eczema on your hands. Yeah. Yeah. I, and you never wear rings. Nope. If you wanted to get married in this alternate universe, Christine, <laughs> would I be getting you something other than a ring? Maybe. Like what though? A necklace. Maybe just like sparkly earrings. Earrings. I really, I really like earrings. <laughs> no, like I, I don't care. Earrings, yeah. I don't think of it that way. But the, I am, I realize I am the odd one out. I am mm. the unpopular opinion <laughs> that like, I don't care to have a, a sign on this very specific finger that says I am taken. Yeah. I I don't care for it. Even though I am taken. I am taken. Just so <laughs> you know. Dear world. You just I want taken. the world to think you're single. But I don't need a ring or to put in my Instagram bio taken by Ben or, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, that should be care. the top line of your Twitter bio. No. You haven't been kicked off Twitter, right? No. Nope. Nope. I think I'm still good. <laughs> All right, okay. next one. Am I the a-hole for abandoning my girlfriend on top of a mountain? Was it Polish Mountain? Oh, well, another guy. Okay. Um, I know this sounds bad, but hear me out. Uh, it wasn't even a big mountain. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, stop. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, was, it, it wasn't even a big mountain. Just a okay. little mountain. So basically, I've been going on hikes alone on the weekend mornings while my girlfriend eats pancakes. Uh, on Sunday, I went to do a peak that's pretty easy if you're uh, experienced like me, but it still takes a few hours. I went early so I could get back for the football game at one. Uh, I could not miss this game. So I woke up early to go and my girlfriend gets up with me and is like, I want it. Let's do it. I, and I was like, what? She gives me this whole spiel about how she's trying to be better herself and her body and she wants to give, uh, she says this every year, but I still felt obligated to bring her along. Uh, Before I agreed, I made sure she understood that it would be challenging and that I was going to be at a brisk pace because I needed to be home in time for the game. I told her that if she wanted to, Mm -hmm. we could do some lighter hikes later this week so she can ease herself into it, but she insisted she could keep up. Uh, Of course, it didn't go that way. She fell behind immediately before the real scent even began. I offered to turn around and tackle it another time, but she insisted she just needs to adjust to the altitude change. Nope. Uh, It took us over two hours to get up and she complained and begged for water the entire time. Uh, we got to the top and I told her we needed to get down faster than we went up because if we didn't, I was going to miss kickoff. Uh, she was all pissy over that and was like, uh, isn't spending time with me more important than the game? Uh, I knew this was bait, so I just <laughs> said back that I told her that she knew the conditions beforehand and it wasn't respectful of her to slow me down like this. Uh, she got real mad and I basically and basically shrieked across the entire peak that I might as well just leave her up there. I was so angry and embarrassed by her that I did. <laughs> I told uh, her the descent down was easy and there were plenty of people that could help her if she needed it and I headed back down the mountain alone. (laughs) I felt bad, so I waited for her in the car and watched the game on my phone. She didn't make it down until the fourth quarter, (laughs) which I pointed out to her as soon as she opened the door. (laughs) She won't talk to me. Uh, I know my actions were hurtful, but her peak freakout had humiliated me and I didn't know what else to do. Am I the asshole? And also just since people were asking, it was a Jets game. <laughs> Does that make <laughs> In case it you want to know who he's cheering for, it probably makes it worse. Who's who's a Jets fan? Oh my god. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Uh at least this is a less monstrous scenario mm-hmm. as compared to some of the other men we have seen yeah. in this episode. Um how do you feel about this? There's some gray area here, I think. <sighs> I <laughs> The, the human, the person who like steps back and analyzes the situation in me wants to be like, you shouldn't just leave your partner on a mountain, especially if she wasn't knowledgeable about the conditions or experience, like she could actually get hurt. Yeah. And I think that should probably trump all other things. Yeah. At the same time, the other, the other part of me is like, I identify with, 
with him in the sense that like he has a schedule he told her everything gave her fair warnings offered to turn back said maybe let's practice some other time like yeah. knew she probably wasn't ready and told her like he did everything that he was trying to do to accommodate her and prepare and she was the stubborn one and was just like no she kind of put herself in this position at the same time if <laughs> i'm this guy I'm not leaving my girlfriend on yeah, top of a because, man. Because because something that. bad could happen, and then you would never live with yeah, yourself. Yeah, I'd walk down the mountain with her slowly, and then be resentful that she After made the me fact. miss the and football. Then be really game. mad. <laughs> and then yeah, <laughs> and then bring up that scenario for years afterwards. Or just like carry her. <laughs> just carry her just down. Carry her down the mountain. I don't know. Maybe you can't carry someone. Can down you roll down. down a mountain faster? That doesn't sound like the safest thing to do. <laughs> no, no. Don't ask me. <laughs> the only mountain I've been to is a nail polish, so it's hard for me to relate to hiking up a mountain. <laughs> also, sports fans are just weird. Like some people are just like, I need to catch the game. Like, well, that's like you sometimes. Not watching really. hockey. <laughs> oh come on! Like I'm very excited that hockey's coming back I next know, week. You're it's going to occupy my time—a nice, fun distraction. Mm -hmm. But would I abandon you because I need to turn on the television and catch the first period of a hockey game? No. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah you would ultimately do whatever I said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. No, if it was important, of course. <laughs> like trying to get down well, a mountain. Instead of abandoning you in the wilderness, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe if I was being difficult and you're just really annoying, you might leave. Maybe. <laughs> All right. And last one. Am I the asshole for not letting my girlfriend see what's inside my secret private box? T. My girlfriend found my box in the attic. <laughs> Fortunately, it has a lock on it, but she's been bugging me about it ever since. She keeps asking me what's in it. And I keep telling her that it's just some stuff that's private and personal to me. And I don't want to see or talk about it. That's the entire post. Ooh. That's all the information he has. Ooh, Pandora's box. Maybe, maybe there was a follow-up on Pandora's box. He doesn't even... What, do you even... think he's a magician no. or a wizard? <laughs> he says that he doesn't even want to see or talk about the stuff inside the box. So that makes me think it's some um, related to some early trauma oh, or something you, that... You bringing up childhood trauma Or something that might be like triggering to him um, that he just doesn't or want to look at it. letters but from an ex-girlfriend. Maybe, or... but there's a reason he wants to keep it. What are the chances what's really in that box is worse than her imagination running wild about what's in the box? You know what I mean? Mm. She's going to assume like it could be all like the worst things possible. Meanwhile, maybe it's his fucking Pokemon cards or something. <laughs> like, I, I don't, don't think it's... Uh, if it was his Pokemon cards, why wouldn't he want to see it? I don't know. Maybe. Why I, does he I, have I, a I'll box? Make, maybe it's full of money. Maybe he's know. got a weapon. I <laughs> understand your point of view. Like, maybe it's just causing more harm to keep it a secret. But at the same time, like, I think individuals should have some right to privacy, even oh, if totally. you're in a relationship. So maybe it's like his mom's ashes or i don't know like something that's like it, deeply personal and has nothing to do with her yeah that he just doesn't want to talk about or you know bring up again and he should have that right i think oh totally yeah, yeah. in a relationship if you have trust as any healthy relationship mm -hmm. should there's totally i think an expectation that you should be able to have things that you're I mean, to actively be keeping things from your partner is a little different. It's more, I guess when I think about it, I think more like I don't feel any need or desire to like ever look through your phone or anything crazy like that that you hear about some couples doing, right? Mm -hmm. And if you had like a folder on your computer full of like old personal things. What if it just said secrets? Would you open it? <laughs> I, would be, I, I would be lying if I said I wouldn't be curious about what's in yeah. it. Yeah. What's? Do you have a secret folder? No, <laughs> I'm just saying if I had a folder called secrets, would you open it? Yeah, no, I, yeah, I this think is a he's weird allowed a, a private box. And, yeah. but the fact that he doesn't even want to see and talk about it also means to me that it's probably like heavy and significant and not at all relevant to his current life. So maybe it's something he wanted to put and file away emotionally and she should at least try and wrap her head around that and accept that. Why would something you want to keep that thing at all then? Like... I think there could be a few reasons. One of them maybe it sits his mom at his mom's ashes. I'm just making this up. Sure, sure. But like that would be something, something like that, that I could totally see. Okay. I mean, you know what I mean? Like I as, think there are things. As a that loving make sense. partner, would you not wanna 
understand the things and talk about it uh, yeah but like, here, be supportive that's exactly way. my point is that he doesn't even want to talk about it because he hasn't made peace with it and he's not ready to so why would he talk about it with her because that basically means he has to address it again yeah. and he's not ready for that so maybe one day he will be but right now like he just said he doesn't even want to see or talk about it so he's not ready well it sounds like everyone would benefit from some therapy maybe maybe or maybe it's just like <laughs> full of cheerios he's just a weirdo There's, like stale <laughs> It's full of or, or maybe he's a weirdo, but like that's fine, you know. Hey, is it? I, maybe I have a box. I'm sure I have tons of boxes with weird things in them in this house. Oh yeah, that's of totally course. true. But you're not keeping them from me. Maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> look at all these boxes behind me, Ben. Yeah, yeah, I know. Don't what's look in them. In them. <laughs> full of nail polish. Okay. All right, that's the last one. Apologies to Hassanabi Hassan Piker. Uh, we were going to have him on today to talk about American politics. But, but we, we weren't doing this live, time. so we couldn't have him. We were, yeah, we, this wasn't a live stream, no. Uh, but thank you for tuning in. We hope mm -hmm. you enjoyed this episode of Simply Pod Logical. This was fun. It always reminds me that I have a good partner. So. <laughs> ah, that's so sweet. Yeah, let me just keep showing you all these examples Is, of terrible men so you feel better about me. You did pick these ones. This may have been um, a little bit strategic on I, my part. I see your strategy, Ben. Okay. See right through it. Well, next time we could do the opposite, try to find more examples of terrible women. There just aren't as many though, right? It kind of seems that way. <laughs> Why are they always <laughs> I'm not lying. It's I, not like you're, you're cherry picking I, these, right? I did not, no. Yeah, so. <laughs> All right, here's your reminder. It's Tuesday. Happy Taco Tuesday, everyone. <laughs> it's uh, January something. It is the first month of 2021. Let's uh, keep going. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's okay. Things might turn around soon, maybe. Who knows? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck out there. All right, everyone. All right. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see y'all later. Bye.